All right, Greg, the old saying goes that division games are tough because the teams know each other. They get to play each other more often. You kind of have a feel for what each team's going to do. But this is this is game number five for Seattle and San Francisco since last season. And it, I mean, it's been all Niners average score of 30 to 14 in favor of San Francisco. They obviously just put one on them on Thanksgiving is there anything the Seahawks can do to make this a more competitive series in the second game? Yeah, listen, I, I think Seattle, you know, I think you have to be careful getting, you know, too tied up in the historical kind of matchups and, you know, who won last year. And I know they just played a couple of weeks ago on Thanksgiving and obviously that was a pretty one-sided affair, but I think when you look at it, I think Seattle has enough guys to keep this more competitive, right? I think that they, are disappointed how they played, you know, that, that Thursday night on Thanksgiving night, I think, you know, they, they kind of, even, especially being at home, San Francisco kind of came in there and kind of blew their doors off and it wasn't really competitive for much of the second half. I, I anticipate Pete Carroll's teams being a little bit more prepared. He, he has a kind of track record of getting back on track. I mean, they've never lost four games in a row under his leadership. I mean, that's a pretty remarkable stat of just consistency and the ability to get back on track. But when it comes to San Francisco, I just think they're a hard matchup for everybody. I, I think they are when healthy. I think this version, if, if this, this group, this version that we saw last week, if they stay healthy and they stay intact, I don't know if there's even a debate. They're the best team in the league. Um, now, does the best team in the league always win? Of course not. We, we see that time and time and again, but I, I think this is, Less about like, hey, Seattle doesn't match. I don't know how many teams really in the league match up with San Francisco to begin with. Yeah, you and you and KB got a, a very close look at it last week. I mean, six six touchdowns in a row against the best record in football. It obviously speaks for itself. But having a chance, and and you've watched them twice now, once in a loss, and then looking at their absolute best. You could go anywhere with this, but I mean, when they're clicking like they were against Philadelphia, I mean, what what impresses you the most if you can limit it to one thing? Oh man, I, I'm not sure with San Francisco if you can limit it to one thing. Right. I, you know, I think what stands out for them, just generally speaking, is no matter what personnel groups on the field, no matter which side of the ball is on the field, they are the most talented group of eleven at any point and really in any game. And I think that compa that compiled with the great coaching. Right? I think Steve Wilkes has done a great job with that defense. The secondary has really improved. I'd say that's kind of his big kind of, he's put his thumb, his thumbprint on that defense and just seeing it from the secondary down when it always had been kind of a linebacker led group and obviously a ton of success with the previous coordinators. And then what we all know, Shanahan's running, what I think is the best scheme in the league. I think what they're able to do protecting their protectors, the run advantage they gain compiled with all the talent. It's just, I don't know where you start, right? So if, if I'm Seattle or I'm just anybody playing San Francisco, I'm saying to myself, okay, what hurts me the most? I look at that Philadelphia game. We were there. What hurt me the most? The one play touchdowns, the long touchdowns to Debo, the long touch, the long ball, you know, get you inside the 10 to, to Kittle. They have to, Seattle and everyone else who plays San Francisco the rest of the year, they have to find a way. If San Francisco is going to score on me, I'm going to make them run 10 plays. Let them, let them just go a chunk, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, and maybe I get a couple red zone stops. But the, the, the notion that we're just going to keep letting them score in one play, we're going to let Debo Samuel break a touchdown, break a tackle and run for a touchdown. The fact that we're going to let, you can't. You just can't give them the explosive element. Now, easier said than done, but I think, that to me is where it starts for Seattle. Put a lid. Maybe McCaffrey runs wild in the run game. Bleed the clock. Limit possessions. Get a couple. Maybe you get a turnover. Maybe you win a couple red zones. And instead of them scoring forty-two, maybe somehow you can keep them in the mid to high twenties. And we saw Seattle's offense, you know, be able to put up some points last week, although they lost, um, you know, last Thursday to Dallas. I, that to me seems like the formula. And you know, whether or not you can execute, it's a different story.